What's going on, guys? Welcome back to The Commodity. I'm Fez, and today we're watching Gordon Ramsay and Chef Monique Fiso prepare their Maori, Maori-inspired dish, Gordon Ramsay Uncharted. So this one, I'll admit, I did steal it from another YouTuber. In uh, Whenever you have a YouTube channel, uh, they tell people uh, what people are watching and stuff like that, and... I'm a foodie already as it is. I literally went and spent $100 on tons and tons of meat, you know, even though meat's kind of gone up. But I did buy uh, a lot of the meat that's at this place that I buy from is actually from Australia. They do, um, what's it called? A lot of the uh, um, uh, veal and lamb and all that good stuff is from uh, Australia. They buy other meats from other parts of the world, which is really awesome. Um, so it does cost a little bit more money, but it's well worth it. Uh, rack of lamb. I love fixing rack of lamb. I did not get it. I should have, but I already spent $120 today. I don't need to spend more. Um, next time I buy, I will do some more. Um, so link to the discord will be up here. Link to the gaming channel will be down below in the description as well as the discord. Um, but guys, if y'all enjoy these videos, please like comment, subscribe. I'm trying to get to 100K subscribers, but let's go ahead and jump into this one. It's my final day in New Zealand, and I'm back on Stewart Island. Big day today. It's time to put everything I've learned into practice. So, a little bit nervous because I'm coming out of my comfort zone. Tonight, I'll serve a Maori inspired feast to a group of elders with my kick ass mentor, Monique. Gordon. I survived. Oh, you survived? Oh, my lord. You good? Oh, I'm excellent. Let's just hope this cook goes to plan. If not, Monique's going to have my balls in a vice. <laughs> what do you got? So I've got my herbs, uh, I've got the goats, I've got the power. Should I light the fire? Not Aww. yet. Well, First, we need to dig the pit. The pit? The pit. Right. Then we've got to light the fire, heat these rocks until they're glowing red. Let me go ahead and say this. Link to the Discord's down in the description. I want more food videos. Uh, I know there's a couple that I want to react to, but I want to know that you're interested. So please let me know down in the comments. And again, Discord, I want some links. Then we're going to put our food in the ground. Then we're going to wait a few hours. Then we're going to dig it back out as if it wasn't painful enough to dig the hole in the first place. And then we'll serve the food. Why a pit? Because this is how we do it. We're doing a hungi. A hungi? How far down? Two feet. What did she Stop. say? Stop. We're doing a hungi. A hungi? How far down? Is that the same thing? I know there's a lot of uh, uh, different countries around the world, including the U.S., that will cook underground. Is that what it is? Let's see. Two feet. Stop it. I'm not That's kidding. That's so deep. Dating back to their ancestors in Polynesia a thousand years ago. <laughs> this is crazy. The hanging is a traditional Maori method of cooking food in so, the ground. Yep. You've gone eeling. Yeah. You've gone goat hunting. Yeah. You've gone diving. Yeah. You've gone into the forest. You've discovered all these amazing things about New Zealand. Are you ready for tonight? To be honest, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous. Now that I'm digging a pit to cook my goat in, you didn't tell me oh, at the goat. beginning of the week that we're going to be digging a hole and cooking it in a pit. I always like to leave a few surprises. Confident? Yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I love Gordon, man. I love Gordon. He's such a short, he's got such a short fuse. He, he, and he doesn't have an issue speaking his mind. I love the guy. Sometimes he's a little over the top, but I, I, I love him. At the end of the day, I think he's fantastic. One hour of hard labor later, we're ready for stage two. We are flaming, girl. This is going to burn for two hours, so in the meantime, we'll get all our stuff ready to put in the pit. How big is that? Oh, they're they're just getting the coal. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. They're burning it down. I would love to try this. Time to get cooking. Starting with my mounting gear. If one day I get a whole bunch of land, I am doing this. Whether They had leg of lamb. I don't know if that's lamb. I, he did say goat. I don't know if... Yeah. But they they sell that at uh, at the place I went to. It's called Wild Fork. I wonder where that's based out of. It might be Australian. I don't know. But they do a bunch of ads on TikTok. That's for dang sure. Goat and those fiery leaves we foraged from the forest. Right. Monique, uh, what are you rubbing your uh, goat with? Oh, goat. The 
Jalapeno. Yeah, go. You using jalapeno on yours? Yes. Me too. Nice and spicy. Nice and spicy. That's going to be the pepper flavour in there as well, right? That's right. In my kitchens, I use foil to wrap meat, but that's not the Maori way. All right, no tin foil, no worries. We're using puka leaves. Do we wrap veins inside or outside? Uh, inside. To stop the meat drying out during cooking. And harakiki flax to tie them together. That's one done. I mean, it's a little bit prehistoric, but it's done. Right, next one. Why is he in a race? Oh, oh, I think it's coming undone, Chef. Not tight enough. I think you might want to start again. Chef, Bloody I love the bells. accent. It looks easy tying these things, but it's not. You know that. Just like your shoelace, Gordon. Right. I would love to sure try this. Sure, your kids this. could do it. Holy mackerel. Fragrant and highly strung, and that's just me. I want some viewers that are chefs that could, like, mail me some of these leaves that I could actually use with the problem is I don't want them to dry out. I could probably find a place to, to dig up and cook from. A goat I'd goes show into up at a park lined with aromatic herbs. Ah. The sweet potatoes in as well. Sweet potatoes in and we'll just put them in the gaps. Oh, oh. Heavy, huh? Yeah. So two are the now red hot rocks. How hot is that? Must be 1,000 degrees. Holy crap. And then the ground just holds that heat in so well. All right, we're almost there. Oh my gosh. Now let's get the food on. Like that. Next, the pit is covered with soaking sacks to create a primitive pressure cooker. And then... Oh, did you hear that? Yeah. That's thing. the steam starting. If you weren't sick of your shovel... Finally, because I haven't been punished enough already, more shoveling. I've met some hard workers in my time, but Monique oh. is on another level. She's in a hurry. She's got... If there's ever a cook that complains about the stove, I'm sending them to you. <laughs> What an Being a hustler and a like a, a hard worker definitely uh, uh, earns his respect. You can tell. Amazing technique, an underground oven. There's no cavity wall insulation. There's no digital clock to set the timer. <laughs> There's no convection. You got a hole, baby. That's the whole video. I want to see the final product. Now, here's the thing. So I, I've seen this is the, the main issue you have in any of these types of uh, cooking is um, temperature, making sure the meat is actually cooked. There's no way to actually know until you pull it out and make sure that it's actually cooked and completed. Um, so I, I think now there's, I mean, you can't use a Bluetooth thermometer, but like what I have, I have a it's got a crazy long cord. It'd be perfect for that. You can hook up two or three of them. And then I have a monitor and it comes out of the dirt or out of the grill or out of however you're cooking it. And you have a Bluetooth connection on another monitor and you could easily see what's going on. Uh, so you can actually cook it to a safe temperature because that's the main issue with that. Because I've watched several cooking uh, shows where they're like, basically like, we just hope it's cooked because you just like what he said you don't have a clock you don't have a thermometer in it you don't have a way to know that it's actually cooked and done all right that makes me so happy i'm so like i'm hungry i should be getting a phone call here in about maybe an hour or so and i'm going to be eating like a king i'm actually so this is a shirt that i used to not uh i used to be able to fit in and now i'm i'm fitting in it it's kind of getting loose i still got a little bit of chunk to go but I've already lost, you know, almost 28 pounds, almost 30 pounds, somewhere in that ballpark. So I get to cheat tonight. I eat whatever the heck I want. I need to get Bluetooth headset. But uh, yeah, no, no, I'm looking forward to it. And I love to cook. I'm thankful that I do the, the keto diet because I love meat. And y'all should see my freezer. My freezer is stacked with meat. And I have no issues with spending the money on it because I know it's quality food. So I just don't want to have bad meat and everything like so. But yeah, guys, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification. And until next time, bye.